Okay, uh, citizens, ladies and gentlemen, this time is 6 o'clock. At this point, we will call the meeting to order, regular meeting of the Tuskegee City Council, June 24, 2014. We will begin with an invocation, and if she will agree to do so, we'll ask Reverend Anderson if she'll come forward to give us an invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. We ask you to stand for the Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come once again thanking you for the many blessings that thou have stowed upon us, realizing that in nothing that we have done so good, but because you are good, you allow to have an opportunity to roll on just a little while longer. Father God, we thank you for all that you are doing for us. We thank you for what all you are about to do for our city. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for our mayor, our council, our commission of government, our county government. We thank you for our city government. Father God, we just thank you for Tuskegee as a whole. Father God, bless the Southern family. Bless all the bereaved family, Father. Give them comfort in their bereaving hour. Father God, we need you at, least at this time. Father God, just touch all over the city. Father God, bring progress all over the city's job, Father God. We say there are some people out there that are looking for jobs. And Father God, we just thank you. We know that you work through people. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your love and your kindness. Father God, we thank you for everything that you're doing for us and that, that you're going to do for us. Now we give it all back to you because we know that you're able to do all things. We ask these blessings that son Jesus name. And they all say, Amen. Amen. Suggestions, criticisms, however, with solutions, and any other contribution you'd like to make. patrolling at one point. We don't see them now. And I know the work is still in progress. So I just wanted to say a special thank you for your efforts. Thank you. That's Ms. Mitchell, right? I'm sorry, yes. She leaves your name, Ms. Mitchell. Yes, Deborah Mitchell. Thank you. I also want to announce if anyone is familiar with QuickBooks, you will contact the Tuskegee Macon County Community Development Corporation. We are trying to do a special class on QuickBooks. We've talked with several businesses. As you know, we do business plans. We work with businesses and planning, and that's one of the things we found that was needed. We thought we had one or two people and found out that they weren't quite ready. We have another person from the government who's offered to do it. Uh, and so if we don't get someone before August, we'll go ahead with that person. We will make that announcement for those who like to participate. But if you know anyone locally who's very familiar with QuickBooks, capable of teaching it, to a small group, please let us know. Thank you. Our parents. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. 
Okay, uh, citizens, ladies and gentlemen, this time is 6 o'clock. At this point, we will call the meeting to order, regular meeting of the Tuskegee City Council, June 24, 2014. We will begin with an invocation, and if she will agree to do so, we'll ask Reverend Anderson if she'll come forward to give us an invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. We ask you to stand for Good evening. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come once again thanking you for the many blessings that thou have stowed upon us, realizing that in nothing that we have done so good, but because you are good, you allow to have an opportunity to roll on just a little while longer. Father God, we thank you for all that you are doing for us. We thank you for what all you are about to do for our city. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for our mayor, our council, our commissioner of government, our county government. We thank you for our city government. Father God, we just thank you for Tuskegee as a whole. Father God, bless the Southern family. Bless all the bereaved family, Father. Give them comfort in their bereaving hour. Father God, we need you at this, at this time. Father God, just touch all over the city. Father God, bring progress all over this city's job, Father God. We say there are some people out there that are looking for jobs. And Father God, we just thank you. We know that you work through people. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your love and your kindness. Father God, we thank you for everything that you're doing for us and that, that you're going to do for us. Now we give it all back to you because we know that you're able to do all things. We ask these blessings that son Jesus name. And they all say, Amen. Suggestions, criticisms, however, with solutions, and any other contribution you'd like to make. patrolling at one point. We don't see them now. And I know we, the work is still in progress. So I just wanted to say a special thank you for your efforts. Thank you. That's Miss Mitchell, right? I'm sorry, yes. She leaves your name, Miss Mitchell. Yes, Deborah Mitchell. Thank you. I also want to announce if anyone is familiar with QuickBooks, you will contact the Tuskegee Macon County Community Development Corporation. We are trying to do a special class on QuickBooks. We've talked with several businesses. As you know, we do business plans. We work with businesses and planning, and that's one of the things we found that was needed. We thought we had one or two people and found out that they weren't quite ready. We have another person from the government who's offered to do it. Uh, and so if we don't get someone before August, we'll go ahead with that person. We will make that announcement for those who like to participate. But if you know anyone locally who's very familiar with QuickBooks, capable of teaching it, to a small group, please let us know. Thank you. Dr. Harrington. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and members of the City Council, City Manager, Clerk, and Attorney, and citizens. I'd like to read into the record uh, the message that I sent earlier. Greetings, Mayor and City Council of Tuskegee. The City of Tuskegee is a prime venue for conventions during the next several months. These include, but certainly are not limited to, Stone Age Mass Class Reunion, July 17th to 20th, 16th Biennial Convention of the Tuskegee National Alumni Association, August 7th through 10th. We're coming home this year. And the Alabama NAACP State Convention, October 16th through the 19th. As an active participant and annual member of the planning committees for each, we have scheduled tours of the city. It is in this spirit that I solicit the usual and never failing support of the city in preparing it for the wide array of visitors. And I just want to add, um, particularly on the old Montgomery Highway, there are a couple of abandoned houses, and I don't want to didn't want to call names, but there are a couple of abandoned houses, uh, the Trammell House, the Webb House next to the uh, old Felder um, laundromat. We need to do something with those structures because people will be coming into the city uh, of the old Montgomery Highway, and there are others, but I would ask that the city manager and the city take into consideration that the city is set for many visitors for the remainder of the summer. And we want to look good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Harrington. Um, we ask that you all take note and ensure further notice will be coming about, out about these events. Stone Age Mass Class Reunion, July 17th through 20th, 16th Biennial Convention of Tuskegee National Alumni Association in August 7th through the 10th, and the Alabama State Convention for the NAACP, October 16th through 19th. I thank Dr. Harrington for her efforts and anyone and everyone who works to bring special events to Tuskegee. As it does in other cities, it helps to increase our tax base. It helps us to expand and, and uh, celebrate and host others here to show them what we have. So it is a big plus to the city. And as she is asking, we are asked that uh, citizens as well as the city help us in preparing the city for the visitors. We always want to look out best when we have special visitors coming. Our parents, we're working with the uh, city manager. That's one of the projects the Community Development Corporation is working on also, the, uh, trying to do something with the corridors. And, uh, we'll be working with him on that as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that reminder. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good from District 3. Um, and that's interesting that Dr. Harrington mentioned that, because that's what I'm here for tonight. Some positive stuff this time. Uh, and it's all positive, it's always constructive kind of criticism. I want y'all to know that, and I really still, I've been here 16 years, I really care from the day one since I got here. And um, we're running up in like bus tours and those kind of things that are coming to town. And when you have a function, when you have like 50 to 100 people and they want to, you know, gather, and take a bathroom break or something like that and a place to gather. And supposedly we have, um, the only facilities that I know that is possible is the Multicultural Center. I'd like to know, how is that defined? Is that a public uh, situation, you know, that's supposed to be open to the public all the time for visitors to come through? And, and also, who owns that or operates that? Or is that a city, county type of situation? And is it open, free to the public to use? Also, the um, Chamber of Commerce, should have some type of a facility um, for us to utilize. What's the status on the Chamber of Commerce? Do we have a place where visitors can come in and get pamphlets or whatever anymore? And as a solution to that, I'm thinking maybe like the Gamillion Building, that little area there where they used to hold court, and I'm not sure where they hold court, if they still hold court there. You know, trying to get through that parking lot is like trying to go through a minefield, okay? <laughs> the parking lot needs to be paid real bad because not only do we have folks that are trying to use the library and park there, but you know, people go there to do their the Department of Transportation licensing and things like that. So a lot of people 
visit that building in that area. And there's a like, like an open area on the back side of that building a lot that could be maybe paved over for buses to pull up and utilize that building if we can't use the multicultural center, for example, at no cost for folks that are visiting. And then it'll give them a chance to kind of, you know, see what that area is about. So if y'all would consider some place that, you know, we can um, schedule in folks that want to come and tour our town and visit, that they have a place to go, because they don't have a place to go. So, I mean, you know, people are talking about the mini mall, but the mini mall is not going to do it, because when you're talking about 100 people getting out of a bus trying to come, the mini mall is not the deal. That's not what's, what's a good, you know, reception area to represent our city and our county. So if the multicultural center can make themselves a bill, could somehow or another coordinate, you know, with bus tours or the chamber, we've got to resolve that because we do want to promote, um, you know, tourism. And I thank you all for trying to get that parking lot fixed, Mr. Smith, if we could, <laughs> the, uh, the main building. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Good. Uh, that is a concern that we have noted before, so uh, we'll try to look around at facilities that may be available. Uh, one of the things we had uh, proposed in the past, uh, we went working on an agreement with the uh, university, city, uh, Community Development Corporation, used the Varner House. We actually had 10 drawings done by Tuskegee University students, architect students in the Department of Architecture. However, uh, uh, that was put on hold uh, about midway through Dr. Rashawn's term. This staff actually came. Uh, we worked with that along with Mr. Ali and Ms. Rice and uh, the students in Tuskegee to look at the Varner House for that particular purpose. So it would be large enough to put in the bathroom, to have parking and all that. It served the university as a alumni house, it served the community as a tourism location, additional tourism location, so we could uh, help direct them in the community. However, that got put on hold. So. We'll have to take another look at where we can go. That Dr. Harrington served that committee as well. Stop, stop. So we are hoping that perhaps that can be taken up, but in the meantime, we'll look for other areas. But that was a major plan to address that issue. Somewhere that was centrally located, and as the buses came in, where they could possibly go, and then make sure that they went to the other areas as well. Any other citizens uh, have any comments they'd like to share, questions? It's a, as I understand it, it's a tourist designated area by the city and the county. Uh, I'm not, it works, operates on certain hours, and that I'm not sure of. So we'll have to research that and see if we can get an answer to you uh, by the next public meeting. But we'll look into that. The city that is designated as the welcome center. But it is a private, uh, private well, it's not quite, it's privately operated. Uh, on behalf of the city and the county as a welcome center. So uh, we'll have to see what the arrangements are, see how we can uh, address uh, larger groups when they come in, making uh, facilities available. It's a good suggestion. Okay, any other citizens? Now I thank you for those comments and reminders. We'd like to take note of those issues so we can address them and uh, the announcements from Dr. Harrington as well. We'll proceed at this point um, for approval of the agenda. As council persons that we look at the agenda, make note of any additions. Uh, the first addition we had, the city manager's communications item C on the city council concerns. Councilwoman Whitehead is requested to give a comment regarding the fishing derby this past Saturday on uh, agenda item H, tax rebate incentive is relating to, we want to add that it will be for setting a hearing related to the tax re rebate incentive at the uh, Washington Plaza Shopping Center for the stores there where we have agreed to do a tax rebate. Uh, we have to have a public hearing for that, so that will be set at the next regular council meeting on July 8th. Next item we had added, I think the only other item we added was an item would be listed as item number 15, making German number 16, 
Item number 15 is executive session as requested by a council person. So we will therefore have executive session after other business. So as not to hold the citizens, unless you'd like to stay and see us after we come out of the executive session. So that will be item 15. Adjournment therefore will be item 16. Are there any other additions necessary to the agenda at this time? If not, the chair will entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. So moved, Councilwoman Whitehead. Second. Second, Councilwoman Moon. All in favor, sign of aye. Aye. Uh, approved. Mayor's community approval of minutes. Um, there's a council to look over the minutes, and if you've taken a look at the minutes, uh, when you're ready, we'll entertain a motion for approval of the minutes as presented, with additions and corrections to be made as identified. Move for approval of minutes by Councilman Lee. Second. Second by Councilwoman Moon. All in favor, sign of aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Motion carried. Minutes are hereby approved with necessary corrections as identified. As I indicated earlier, Mayor Ford is not here. He's chairing a meeting, um, I think it was in Colorado or some other part. In Washington. In Washington this time. Okay. He's chairing a meeting in Washington of a special council. Uh, that he uh, serves on and chairs. So uh, we're going ahead with the agenda as indicated with the mayor. Uh, from the city council work session, we didn't have any major concerns that came up that we did not discuss already. Are there any other items that uh, council persons noted from the work session? Anything you'd like to respond to? City manager, anything from the work session that you want to respond to? Okay, no particular items from the work session that brought up anything new um, that needed a response. At this time, we'll uh, consider the boards and commissions. As indicated earlier, uh, we will be reactivating the Tuskegee Historical Preservation Commission. Uh, several persons have uh, been active with this group related to the history. Historical Commission in Tuskegee, and I'll give you those names. We're also asking that any citizens that have someone's name you'd like to add to be considered to serve on the historical commission that you forwarded to the mayor, the city manager, or any of the council person so we can consider adding them to the commission. Remember when we add persons to the commission, we'd like to look at the background, what can they contribute, their willingness to work and to serve, that's the main thing. The willingness to work and to serve and to do whatever we can to be effective in, in our boards and commissions. Uh, Tuskegee Historical Preservation Commission. Currently, those who have served in some capacity have been active are William Carver Lennar, historian, poet, laureate for the city of Tuskegee and minister, Fabro Wolston, professor at TU and member of the Tuskegee Repertory Theater, Deborah Gray, Tuskegee History Center, Bill Perry, musician, Denise Milton, archivist, Marie Lyles, Playwright and scholar, Rhonda Carrier, professor at Tuskegee University, Diane Robinson, Tuskegee Repertory Theater, Miss Sandy Taylor, National Park Service Superintendent, and added was uh, Major Holland, who's a local architect. Uh, Council persons, any names that you want to submit at this time for consideration? We got folks assigning these names today. We can move it to the next agenda. I understand we're getting the names today, so we can start notifying the person and asking them to accept the appointment to that commission, and we can add more to the need. I definitely think these are all worthy candidates and will serve great on the committee. I would also like to see a few young people added to the to the, to the to continue that. You know, the strength of the committee. The years, not to say anybody on here is not young now, but some younger. <laughs> Add a few, few more young people. <laughs> that would be my suggestion, but I'll, I'll get back to you with those names. Okay, thank you, Councilman Lee. A good suggestion to add some younger people to the committee, and uh, that's something we sometimes overlook. Um, 
I don't know what that means because I always get called young man when I'm in certain groups, you know. <laughs> Depends on how they're speaking to you if they want you to understand they're in charge, you know, they call me a young man. So I guess I'm not quite fit in that category. Uh, but any other council persons have any suggestions or names at this time? Okay, these are names of persons who have been active in some capacity, not necessarily the names who have been approved as yet. We will have to decide actually uh, the size of the commission is our understanding, and Mr. Trinney may give us some information on that, and uh, the final names to be actually added to the commission. So that's why we're asking for other names. These are people who have served in some capacity, attended early meetings, and shown some interest. So if there are others that you know have uh, capabilities, qualifications, or interests, Serving, please let us know. Please add Attorney Fred Ray C. I see Thank you, Dr. Harrington. Okay, any other names we want to entertain at this time? Okay, the second item is the establishment of a nonprofit entity. Um, Attorney Gray will be seeking to establish the Historical Commission as a nonprofit entity so that we can seek funds and resources as a nonprofit. So we will ask the council to entertain a we entertain a motion tonight to ask you to do that. That'd be in order. You could just direct me to do it and okay. we'll entertain a motion to direct if you so choose council to direct uh, attorney to develop a resolution to establish the historical commission when appointed as a Nonprofit entity uh, capable of our uh, seeking resources in such capacity. Moved by Councilwoman Moon, seconded by Councilwoman Whitehead. All in, ready, all in favor of the question, sign of aye. Aye. All opposed, this name. Thank you. Motion carried that we hereby direct the attorney to establish the Historical Commission, Tuskegee Historical City Commission as a nonprofit entity once uh, the appointments have been completed. Okay, we have an announcement that the Town of Shorter will celebrate its Shorter Day event on this Saturday, June 28th. There are several events going on. We do want to support Shorter in the spirit of cooperation, a sister city in the community. Uh, that's June 28th, this Saturday. And we will have announcements about other events in the city of Tuskegee as well. So try to make any and all that you can safely and within the speed limit. Uh, do we have anyone here from uh, Tuskegee University this time? SGA or any other capacity with the university? Okay, if not, we will uh, move to the city manager's communications. Uh, city manager, Mr. Harvey Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for Tim, Council. Citizens, good evening. Good evening. On the city manager's uh, communications, uh, as you can see there, we have several items. Uh, specifically on the council updates, uh, several things were on the agenda there. Chapter James is going through marital subdivision. Uh, that street, uh, some concern was about rerouting the traffic. 18 wheel traffic through another street. So we talked to the Department of uh, Alabama Department of Transportation about that. That street was originally a state street. And uh, it was turned over to the city. The city got responsibility for it now. But there were some agreements that they think were involved in routing the traffic down Chapter Chain. They are checking those agreements to see what they are saying. And as uh, soon as they uh, get back to me with uh, what they're going to do, I'll let the people in that neighborhood know what we have to do to reroute the traffic. Right now, we're thinking about rerouting the traffic to uh, uh, Wild Road. Instead of it coming all the way down to Jeff James, Route to the Wild Road. 
but that has to be approved by the Department of Transportation. Okay. It's good Some of those. Yes. Good suggestion. Uh, that truck traffic going to Columbus goes wide road as it is now, yes. comes up and gets on 29 going uh, to Columbus East. Yes. So that would fit because that's a pretty straight shot when you come off the wide road through the National Park, the Tuskegee National Forest, come down 29. Okay, some of the other streets, Nancy, Alton Street, uh, we're still trying to figure out a solution to the underground water. They have some, uh, so as soon as we figure out a solution there, we'll, we'll stay in front. Thank Councilman uh, Lee. We have got some issues on Washington Street about the street light and stop signs. Same thing there, we can get with the Department of Transportation to get up the line. But we are going to put some stop signs. And uh, I think Green Fork Park came up as a, as a problem last week. The water wasn't on. Uh, during the winter, I believe the water was left on and some pipes burst. So that was the reason they didn't have water. And I think we, we got that problem straightened out if we do have water, right?
Alabama at 29 Main Street. He was cleaning up the property across from his property because he said he saw a snake over there. Not his property, but I thought that was a great thing. He was over there cutting somebody else's grass to keep the snakes and what happened from coming over to his property. He said nobody else would clean it up, so he decided he would do it. And that's what we as citizens got to do to help in the community, not your property. Sometimes if it's right next door to you, you can cut the grass in a small spot. And that's what it was, a small area. And he said he killed them, uh, water bottles or something over there. But uh, this is what we're gonna have to do. Also, I'd like to talk about uh, the fishing derby that we had on Saturday. Mr. Brown Lee did a great job. We had the first fishing derby since the boathouse has been prepared and the lake had been cleaned up. And we had a number of young people out there. Some had never fished before, didn't know how to throw a reel. And I was out there. I worked with those young kids, trying to help them throw a reel. We had a good time. And some of those young kids, like four and five years old, caught some big old catfish. One little boy, four years old, caught five. And I thought he was just having a good time. And the kids were so excited. Some were afraid of the worm, but we helped them out to try to understand the worm not gonna hurt you. So uh, we just had a good time. I'd just like to commend, I wish Brownlee was here today. I'd like to commend him for doing what he did for the city lady. He just took it on. He took that project on on himself, by himself. And really, he doesn't have much help. He had a few people there helping him to, to pass out bait and to get them all registered. It was a big job to get all those young people registered by age level. And when he brought the fish in, they had to weigh them and count them to give out the prizes. I mean, it was just great. So we just got to commend him. I wish we could put him on board as staff member here at the city of Tuskegee because he's doing the job. And if you haven't been to the lake house, please go and see what Mr. Brown Lee has done. People are now having um, parties out there, They're having family reunions and class reunions. It looks just that good you can have that type of item. He has boats out there, paddle boats, fishing boats. And I'm just so happy about that. That's a good project, especially in District 2. I'm so happy to have that lake fixed up and Mr. Brown Lee doing such a good job. And when you go out, please commend him and thank him for a good job. Thank you, Ms. Whitehead. Thank you. I'd like to add to that, uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, went out Saturday and seemed to be very successful, as Ms. Whitehead said. And uh, as I understand, they had about 200 children out there. And uh, they were still out there fishing when I came. But I had something early that morning. But he's done a beautiful job out there, as she has said, not only in repairing, but in stocking the boathouse in terms of what he has out there. So if you get an opportunity, please go out and see what he has. Every now and then I understand they have some food out there and some good food. I had the benefit of getting some of the food that uh, some of the people have prepared earlier. They're very tasty. So uh, it is a good addition. I had um, a few things that I've discussed with the city manager and Mr. Brownlee from the beginning. Still will address those with the two of them, but the work he's done is outstanding. And he's really working with our young people, so we applaud him like you said, Ms. White is the city manager and everything. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to caveat on that. Mr. Brownlee has done a great job out there. But uh, he was assisting who was a great job. With him. He had financial assistance. I assisted him by financial too. We all did that. Okay, next on my uh, city manager communications is the financial report of the city of Tuskegee. You have that report in front of you for the packet. Uh, as I say, you can see the table of contents there and see what makes up the financial report. Uh, I will just go through the first maybe four pages, and uh, any questions, uh, we'd be happy to answer those. Uh, there are any that you need additional information on, and we don't have readily available here, we will uh, get that together for you.
Okay, eight months of the fiscal year ended uh, May 31, 2014. So, 66.67% uh, of the year was completed at that point. The uh, general fund revenues were unfavorable at 64.35%. Figures less than the 66.67. So that makes that figure unfavorable. Budget, you can see the budget there for general fund revenue, 9,116,240. As opposed to the actual revenues of uh, 5 million. Uh, 866.160. And the projection of expenditures were favorable. I didn't put the percentage there. Reducing excess expenditures of 734,260. Now those excess expenditures were taken care of pretty much by uh, other sources of revenue. Those other sources of revenue amounted to 715920 And they were made up of uh, 7 cent gasoline taxes, 9 cent gasoline taxes, and 1% occupational tax. And other revenue. So that's how close were the deficit year to date of $18,331. Okay, so how did that happen? We had net operating revenues, uh, as I said, of 18331 as compared to net operating revenues in the previous year of 9222 for the same period last year. So uh, 27553 unfavorable change in total cost of operation. represents a 48,234 decrease in revenues and a 20,681 increase in expenditures over that period of time. Now last year we had uh, a bond issue which we included as part of the revenues of that year, which was uh, $300,000, which uh, makes that year looked a little better because of that. And also other factors like you gave the employees their 15% cost of living increase back. Uh, we gave uh, uh, raises to, to employees. Uh, insurance, Blue Cross insurance increase, we didn't pass that on to any employees. So uh, overall, We may be showing a deficit at this point of $18,331, but we're doing a lot better last, at this point in time than we were last year because we are operating just on the revenue that we generate and they are not part of the bond proceeds. Okay. Next page, uh, page two showing the top 10 revenues of the city. Sales taxes down to construction permit. So we budgeted uh, in our top 10 revenues of 8,144,200. We actually collected 5,256,112. So that's 64.54% of the revenues. Top 10 revenues were collected during the day month here. And if you will look at each area there, sales tax, occupation of the average general business license and construction permit, we're comparing those dollars to the previous year. And uh, when you see red, you know that's unfaithful. Except for sales tax revenue, they increased from last year by 20%. 7.45%. So sales tax revenues were at uh, 275000 greater than they were in the previous year. And as we go down, uh, franchise 
gas fees increased by 15.74 percent. So that's 127,000. At lower taxes, the it's pretty level there. The only made the only change there by 648 dollars from the previous year. Court fines 10,000 less than the previous year. We go by the department there, the departmental operating expenditures. You see a column for budget and year to date expenditures. And, uh, you can see which departments there are. Not uh, performing in according to the budget. Bear uh, City Council, City Manager's Office, Human Resources, Information Technology, Municipal Court, Engineering and Inspection, Aviation Management, Fire Department, Police Services, and General Operations. Those. However, our expenditures were at 65% of what was projected. So that's great, that's better than the, the uh, annualized figure of 66.67%. The last page there, we, uh, we're talking about payroll matters. Cross insurance pays for retirement is current. Uh, payroll taxes are current. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you need any additional information, we we'll take that at this time. This will be helpful. Thank you, City Manager. Any uh, <coughs> questions from Council first? <coughs> Just 
Daniel asked about. Yeah. There are all these people <coughs> with the uh, actual consequences. Now, I don't know whether we budgeted the tourists that return on the 15% either, whether they got definitely. Mr. City Manager, uh, when you say for these construction permits and the garbage and trash collections and some of those items going to be in the red due to, first of all, people are not just, people are not building right. in Tuskegee. Right. And until we build our community up and get some businesses in here to cause people to want to come here to build, we're going to have decreases in construction permits and garbage and trash collection of people and moving. Right. You know. That's, that's a reflection in occupation. Occupation. Of, right, right. Until we do that. Yeah. Jobs. Right, we don't have jobs. It'll be like that until we get better. Uh, we provided uh, for the month of May. 
Also you have before you uh, is our FY15 refunding application. It's that time of the year, even though we are a uh, five year um, awarding agency, we're still required to complete our annual refunding application. And you will see that we're requesting our normal dollars of uh, 2.2 million. And we as the applicant are required to come up with uh, 413,000 uh, for uh, non-federal share match, uh, which we also refer to as in-kind. So the total is 2.7 million that we are requesting. At this time, we have not heard um, from um, the restoration of our sequestration dollars. Um, we are told that it will be for the month of July or August when we will hear something. So these dollars uh, that we're requesting, which we were told to request our normal dollars minus um, the sequester. So once we're here, we'll, we'll share with you. Uh, we're also required to share with you our teaching strategies, goal assessment results. Uh, we assess our children three times a year, fall, winter, and spring, and you will have your spring results and overall results. And if you look, there. Uh, five areas, social and emotional development, language and literacy development, approaches to learning, cognitive and general learning, and physical development and health. And if you look at the overall pro progress, all those children who were on levels one and two, the below levels, the starting level, beginning level, um, have increased, um, which is what we want to see. Um, for them to move to the levels of three to six where they're meeting or maintaining the required learning development or exceeding level seven to nine. You have also before your family partnership agreement. Uh, Head Start not only serves the child, we service the entire family. And one of the requirements that we needed to include with our family partnership agreement with our families was school readiness. And you will see that highlighted portion. We actually work with families for them to set goals uh, and timelines and time frames to achieve, achieve realistic, variable goals. Uh, you have, the next item is our self-assessment results action plan. We're required each year to conduct an internal review of our program to determine if we're meeting and maintaining the uh, federal standards. And there are two areas um, we use the monitor protocol, the Head Start monitor protocol, which we're going to be using um, when our federal review occurs this fall, uh, which consists of over 2,000 items. So there were two items that we um, need areas of improvement. One was the area of um, our records for our family community partnership area. The reviewer, as they were reviewing all 291 files, uh, found three files that were, uh, the documents were in the file, just out of order. So uh, we're gonna type up our system on uh, record keeping, keeping for that. And our other area was related to uh, our turnover. Uh, we have substitutes um, that we utilize when we have teachers who have decided to move on to other endeavors. So we have set a plan in place to uh, ensure that uh, we'll have a smooth transition between the two. And the last item is our training and technical assistance plan. Uh, we're required to submit this with our refunding application along with the self-assessment. Uh, training and technical assistance plan as it relates to all those areas in our program that we have identified needing areas of improvement and where our staff may need additional training or technical assistance. So there are several areas in the plan listed here, um, and if you have any questions, I'll address them. That ends the items on the agenda. Um, I need you to assist me, <laughs> Mr. Smith, um, as it relates to the, the building of the facility, because um, I didn't get any final information from the council or, yeah, or regional office. That'll watch then. Okay. Okay. I have not heard from them yet. Um, Do you have, can we get an 
on the top of your space. Sure. The drawings, the design? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next item on the well, there's two items. You, you've got to accept the financial report and the S file. Receive this, I should have said receive it. I'd like to make a vote. I'd like to have a motion to receive the financial report. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Financial report accepted. Um, and the acceptance of the Head Start report, I'd like to make a, I'd like to have a motion to accept the Head Start report. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, receive. Uh, to receive the report. To receive the no, Head Start report. All those in favor? Resolution for reimbursement of funds from the bond issue contributions uh, to exit 38 project. I'd like for all the council to be present unless there's a dying group for that. I'd like to move these items to the next uh, agenda. Uh, resolution for retirement of COLA. Do we have to do that one tonight, Mr. City uh, Manager? No. Okay. Uh, announcements. Um, Councilwoman Whitehead suggested that we bring this meeting to a quick close, but we'd like to move down to the resolutions if possible so that we can get through those and then we'll close the meeting. We probably need to make a motion for those. The, uh, the next meeting is scheduled for Friday. Friday. Move the table. Yes. Resolution numbers. So we want to do the application. We go ahead and do the application. Go ahead and do the application. Yes. Okay. Application form. So I guess the only ones at this time oh, for the loan. Resolution 2014-66, Reimbursement of Funds, 67. Settlement. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So be it. Now, which one is the city manager you wanted us to go back? Remember the library, William? 68. 68. I think. Resolution 2014-66,
2014-68, celebrating and remembering the life of Ms. Lily Young. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, and... Celebrating and remembering the life of Walter Cook Kenny. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So be it. Other business, the city attorney's report. We, uh, Madam Presiding Officer, have completed the work on the tax rebate uh, incentive agreement, and that agreement uh, has been approved by the uh, Joseph Klan side, Washington Plaza side. Uh, the proper thing for the council to now do is to schedule a public hearing if you have not done so already. Uh, set it for your next regular meeting because uh, Amendment 772, Constitutional Amendment 772 requires the public hearing uh, so that the specifics uh, can be known by the public prior to your vote or prior to your executing agreement. All right, so we're looking for a date. And can we do the public hearing um, just before the next council meeting? We recommend during your next council meeting, during just, the next council. Uh, declare it to be a public hearing, say about 620 or so, and uh, count it that way. Okay. The tax rebate public hearing uh, to be held uh, 620 during our next council meeting. Can I get a right? Mm -hmm. That's right, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So be it. Tax rebate hearing will be next council meeting at 6.20. And the executive session for tonight will be canceled. Anything other business to come before this body? Anything else come before the body? This meeting stands adjourned. Responding. Uh, he was, yes, yeah, that's right.